Welcome to the Accelerate Church television broadcast. We are so glad that you are tuning in with us today. We believe today's message is going to strengthen and encourage you. So get your Bibles ready as Pastor Jeremy File is teaching today's message. Many people, many people, listen to what I'm saying, lack the focus that's necessary to win. Many people do in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, say, thank God for the word. Come on, everybody say it. Thank God for the word. Hebrews 12 and 1 says, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Whoa, time out. you got some witnesses watching your life. You better make sure you're pressing into the things of the kingdom. Because these witnesses that this is talking about, they're telling you, don't you give up. Don't you stop. You keep going. You endure to the end. Since we're surrounded by so great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares or traps us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Well, I'm certainly not the best runner in the world. I've recently started running with my wife, and I'm enjoying it. We're running, praise the Lord, trying to shake this weight off. My goodness, I'm tired of looking fluffy. I don't know about I won't look at anybody because some of you are chiseled. But I'm ready to run a little bit. So I've been running just a little bit. And it's taken me back. I remember what my coach told me in high school back when I used to run the mile. He would tell me, I want you to save a little in the tank for that last, 100 meters when you turn that last corner and the finish line is up there I want you to be able to dig down deep and to sprint if you can well what's that that's running with endurance and there's a lot of people that come in and get excited because God is on the move the real living king who rose from the dead is alive and well here in this house so a lot of people come and get fired up, and they, they blow up and get excited. But will you endure to the end? The Bible says you're to run this race, and you're to endure. you got to run it with endurance, the race that's set before us. And here's one of the biggest keys. It's called focus, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Well, I just want you to know there's a little key right here. I'm going to read the rest of the scripture and the next one. But I want you to catch this. I don't want to move too quick. Because if you focus on the wrong thing, you can't run with endurance. You've got to practice looking at Jesus. And Jesus, according to John 1.1, 1, 1, was the Word made flesh. The Word was God, right? John 1, you read that whole chapter, you'll see what I'm talking about. Jesus and the Word are inseparable. You can't separate Jesus from His Word. So looking unto Jesus is looking unto the Word. It's not just looking to the sky. You can look to the sky and get no help, but you look to the Word, you're going to get help for the race that you're running right here. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Some of you need to shake off depression. You're going to have to do it. No one's going to do it for you. I could lay hands on you. It would give you a little bit of reprieve, but what you do in that reprieve is going to matter. Because if in the reprieve you lean leaning on someone else's anointing for healing or reprieve in, in the fight, what happens if you don't get secured in your own faith, then when the enemy comes back, he just Peter rolls you. So you got to practice looking unto Jesus. You see, God has his kingdom set up like this. A little ounce of prevention is worth a whole pound of cure. But humanity still celebrates the cure ministry over the preventive ministry. And yet there's one that's actually higher. You're in a ministry right now. We're in the prevention ministry. Well, the preventative. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Uh, we have a Christian school. I know we're out for summer right now. But we also have SMTI. And we also, when you come here, are dedicated to make sure you get a fresh word from God. Right? So this is something you can literally build your Christian life right here and you can understand if you will apply the truth here there's so many things that will be prevented from happening in your life so see you don't see all that so that's why it's not celebrated because here we are we're in a body suit we're spirit beings that will live forever we have a soul mind will and emotions but someday if Jesus tarries you're going to lay this body down 
Or if you don't, and you live and remain, you'll be caught up in this body, and this body will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. I'm excited about that. But in the meantime here, uh, if Jesus tarries, you'll lay the body suit down. You know, we've seen this. Death, it happens to everyone. And they lay that down, but they're still alive somewhere. Right? And, and God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So what am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you this, that in life, if you're trapped to just what you see in the natural, you won't have the strength that you'll have if you'll start looking to the Word. You see, the Bible is spirit-coded. These are not just words on paper. Though they are words on paper, they're not just words on paper. Now, I've got a whole bunch of books that are just words on paper. But my Bible is living. Your Bible is living. And if you look to this, here's what will happen. Endurance will be produced on the inside of you. In trying to produce and fabricate endurance, you don't have to do that. This is saying, I'm determined, I'm just going to make it, I'm going to make it. That's good. That'll carry you so far. But it ain't going to carry you near as far as the Word of God and the steady diet of the Word of God on the inside of you. Praise God, I'm glad I came to hear that. we got to look to Jesus in this race we're running. He's the author. Uh, let me just say this. you got to be a professional Jesus watcher. And most people are professional people watchers. Now, this hadn't happened, but let's just say Brandon here on the front row, he's looking over here at Larry, and he's just distracted by that purple tie. How good it just pops off that black suit. And he's over here saying, I wish I had that, I wish I had that. He's going to miss what's happening right here. But then if Larry looks at him and gives him a dirty look, what happens? He misses the strength that God's trying to impart to him. Y'all think I'm just making up a silly little story here. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. This happens all the time. People become professional people watchers. They're looking at people. They're looking at people. There's not strength in people. There's strength in Jesus. Pastors do that all the time. Well, let's cancel Wednesday night. Not very many people come. Well, let me look at the Bible. What does the Bible say? Let's assemble and gather more and more. Not less and less, so therefore, I'm not going to cancel that. Well, 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 people don't come. I don't care. That's not what determines and makes my decision for me. And you got to get there in your personal life where you stop looking unto people. There's no endurance looking unto people. On the second and fourth Sunday nights of every month, we have Life Links. We gather together with like-minded believers and discuss the current series that Pastor Jeremy is preaching. We have food, we laugh together, we pray together, and we build those godly relationships with our brothers and sisters within the church. We would love for you to join us for Life Links. You can find a list of all of our groups along with their locations on our app, our website, or just stop by the desk in the lobby. We have someone there ready to help you find the perfect LifeLink group. Focus on Him. Don't be focusing on something else. The three keys to success we're talking about. Key one, focus. Wrong focus will affect your endurance. Because look at what this verse says in Hebrews 12, 3. Consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You know, a lot of people, I've been in church my whole life, I've heard a lot of this. They focus on how they feel and the discouragement they're dealing with more than what the Word says. How you doing? Well, I'm making it, but just barely. By the skin of my teeth, I'm barely making it. Now, why are you going into such description on how you feel? Just see, I'm telling you, a different way of living is to say, well, the Word says that in all these things, I'm more than a conqueror. I'm going to overcome. The Bible says I'm an overcomer. The Bible says, thanks be to God who always, always leads me to triumph. So therefore, I don't care what it looks like right now. I'm going to win. Say it out loud. I'm going to win. win. See, you got to get this in you. You got to get this on the inside of you. Why? Because we're all dealing with stuff and the devil is expecting you when he throws a jab, jab, jab for you just to lay down and say, oh, that's it. I thought this was the life of ease. No, 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 no. You got to stop focusing on how you feel and start focusing on Jesus. 
I'm going to repeat what I've said several times, but you've got to get this. You will not endure if you're focused on the wrong things. Which, by the way, this is an eternal principle. And if you go back in time, you'll find out this is why God spoke to Joshua when he was going to lead the children of Israel. Finally, after the whole generation passed away except for two people. And their families. Finally, they're going to go to the promised land. And the Lord starts speaking in Joshua 1. And let's look at this. Say it one more time. Thank God for the word. Joshua 1, 7. Only be strong. See, God doesn't have time for you to do anything else. (laughs) I want you to remember what I said when we were at the altar. Some of you have the wrong voice. Here's how you can tell it's the wrong voice. It produces a lack of strength for you to keep going. It produces a lack of motivation for you to continue in your relationship with God. Yeah. This says only. Everybody say only. Only. Be strong and very courageous. See, if you're ever going to walk in what God called you to, to walk in, you're going to have to be strong and very courageous. It's not for the timid. That's why God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, the spirit of timidity, but the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Amen. 2 Timothy 1, 7. Be strong only and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Now, Now let me tell you something. It's going to take some courage to do the word in this end time hour. It's going to take some strength to do the word in this end time hour. But you are well able. You are well able. Say, I'm well able. able. Now look what he says here, Joshua 1.7. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. Now who wants to sign up for prosperity wherever you go? Anybody didn't raise their hands, a liar. I mean, come on. You want prosperity wherever you go? Here's what you do. Focus on what God said in his word. Don't turn to the right. Don't turn to the left. Just do what the word said to do. Amen. And then verse 8 that's famous says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, giving us a key. If you're going to stay focused, you're going to have to stay focused with your words. Keep the word in your mouth. Look at your neighbor. Say, keep the word in your mouth. Yeah, keep the word in your mouth. You shall meditate in it day and night. Well, it's either day or night, so that's all the time, that you may observe to do. See, the whole point of the strength and the courage, the whole point of the word in your mouth is so that you do the word. That's the point of it. I don't think a lot of Christians get it still. The whole point of you being here today is so that now when you're facing situations this week, when somebody does you wrong, somebody does this, or you hear this, instead of listening to it and giving in to it, you say, no, I'm going to be a doer of the word. Amen. Not a gossiper. A doer of the word. I'm making you say a lot of things today, but it's good for you. Say this. I am a doer of the word word. say it again i'm a doer doer. of the word word. yeah that's the point you get that word in your mouth and you keep it there day and night and you don't ever get tired of it see see christians have this well i've heard the word already well that's somebody that's going to let the word go pretty easily I'm glad you heard the word. The answer's in the word. But the point is that you speak the word and do the word. Uh, Do according to all that's written in it. For then, when? After you have only been strong and courageous, right? Right? Are you following this? After you say, I'm not turning to the right, I'm not turning to the left, I'm going to keep the word in my mouth, I'm going to meditate on it day and night, I'm going to do it all the time, that's my standard, then you'll make your way prosperous, and then you'll have good success. We're talking about three keys to success this morning. Key one, focus. you got to focus. When you turn from the word, you turn from your prosperity. So you got to have that mindset. 
When someone tries to talk you out of doing the work, you say, no, I'm not turning from the work because I'm not turning from my prosperity. I'm not turning from my success. I want to be a success. I don't want to be a loser. I've never met anyone that wants to be a loser. Nobody wants to be a loser. They don't. Somebody, well, I do. No, come on. You need a wake-up call. <laughs> it's not fun to be a loser. It's fun to be a winner. Hey, man, you were made to be a winner, not a loser. If you didn't know that, let me be the one to tell you the good news. Yeah, you're supposed to be a winner. Your marriage is supposed to be a winning thing, not a losing thing. Right? God wants you to win in every area of life. But you, you're not going to until you focus on the Lord. Think of David. How would he have defeated Goliath if he was focused on his undefeated record? He's the champion. He's undefeated. What if that's what he was focused on? What if he walked up that day and that's what he said? Well, this guy's undefeated. He's never lost a fight. You don't take his head off talking about how he's never lost. And yet Christians operate that way. Well, the doctor said there's no cure for this. I just don't see any way out. David saw no way out that day. Actually, he did because he saw a covenant. And we know that because he said, who is this Philistine who's uncircumcised? He don't have a covenant about him. He's not in covenant with God Almighty. So when he's speaking against us, he's speaking against our covenant partner, God, Jehovah himself. Do you think a little wimpy, undefeated giant can take out God? No. So when he twirled that stone in that sling, he wasn't just chunking rocks. He had the anointing of God on that thing. You get the anointing of God, that's better than spitting on that rock, let me tell you. You know what I'm talking about? He didn't just spit on it. He may have spit, but it wasn't the spit that did it. It was the anointing. And it's not your ability that's going to get you through. It's the anointing. Glory to God. I'm trying to stay calm. Wow. Imagine David walking up and saying, look at the size of that spear. That sucker weighs over 100 pounds. Got to be strong to stab somebody with that spear. Look at that armor. Look at those biceps. See, you don't ever win articulating the enemy. You only win when you're focused and you keep speaking the word. Accelerate Church has opened its doors to a second location located at 1300 East Central Avenue in Amarillo. The Word of God is thundering forth every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. from seasoned ministers here at Accelerate. If you live in the area, we invite you to join us for power-packed services each week and bring the entire family. We have something for the little ones too. God is building strong families and we would love for your family to join us. See, your peace upon peace, your prosperity of all kinds is connected to where your mind is focused. You got to keep your mind stayed on the Lord. Well, I can tell as pastor, I can tell real quick when people, pastor, I got to talk right now. What's going on? And hey, call me. That's great. I love all of you that talk. I'm not talking about one of you specifically. I'm just talking, this is a general thing. Pastor, tell me the whole thing. I'm like, well, the Bible says, yeah, 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 we know that. Well, you're not keeping your mind stayed on that. So, you know, I mean, my job is to get you to this peace upon peace, all kinds of prosperity, because that's what the Lord wants. And the Lord wants to keep you in that. He wants to keep you in that. See, people, well, that's restrictive. So you want some poverty. You can keep your mind focused on other things, and you'll stay in poverty. But he says you'll keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Glory to God. Again, we're talking about three keys to success. Are you getting anything out of this today? Number one is what? Focus. Number two is following. This is a big one. It's a big, big deal. I preached a whole series on this one before. It's a really, really big deal. There's more than three keys to success, but these are the three we're looking at today. Go to Matthew chapter 10 and verse 37. Jesus speaking, your master, he said, He who loves father or mother 
more than me is not worthy of me. Well, he just gets right to the idols in most people's hearts. You don't talk about somebody's mama. You know that growing up. It's like you could make fun of a dude, but in high school you talk about his mama. He's ready to throw down. I don't care how scrawny or how big he is. You talk about his mama, he's ready to go. You know what I mean? You don't tell mama jokes, fat mama jokes. Anyway, <laughs> for some reason, I, you know, it's just whatever. People, people get all fired up about stuff like that. But, you know, you ought to love and honor your mother and father. The Bible says to do it. It's the first commandment with the promise. But Jesus, I like the way he just shows up and just kind of messes with people's theology. He said, whoever loves father or mother more than me. In other words, they say something and you will take that over what God said. You're not worthy of the Lord. And he who loves, he decided to flip the script the other way too. Who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. See, now, I've made it clear, and I've had people tell me that. You know, that's, that's not being a good dad, but it is. It's being a godly dad. I've told my children, I want to get along with you forever. When you grow up, we have the opportunity to be buddies. I tell my boys this and the girls, of course. We have the opportunity to be friends and, and get along well. But if you don't serve the Lord, we're not going to get along because I've already drawn the line in the sand. I've already done it, and I'm not going to serve my little preciouses more than I serve my God. You want to know how many people have gotten off right here on this exact area? They stop following because, well, i got to have a relationship with my kid. The Bible didn't tell you that. The Bible said, Jesus, your master, quote, he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. So this is a bit challenging to modern American theology. Things, families, everything. Now, we're building strong families here. But these are families that are all together saying, we're going to serve the Lord with all of our heart, with all that we are. That's why we're training our children this way. And my children always tell me, by the way, they say, yes, Dad, you don't have to worry about me. We're going to follow the Lord. Praise God. I thank God for that. Because there's no greater joy I have than to know my children walk in the truth. Do you know God's the same way? And that's in the Bible. God's that same way. There's no greater joy he has than to know his sons and daughters are walking in the truth. Somebody say, that's me. That's me. Now look at verse 38, Matthew 10. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Boy, Jesus put a high value on who you follow. Now you might write this down if you're jotting notes down. You're going to follow what you value. You're going to follow what you value. That's just a fact. It's recorded when you study your Bible that there's several disciples of Jesus where Jesus walked up, thinking of one of them, Levi, it says in one book, but Matthew's how we know him. He walked up to him and said, hey, follow me. Not much motivation there other than to stop doing what you're doing and follow. He walked up to Peter. And his brother, and you know what he said? Hey, follow me. <laughs> We've looked at these scriptures before. But I just want you to think about that. Jesus literally walking up saying, hey, follow me. You either do or you don't. I don't think he's sitting there saying, follow me and I'll make sure everything's paid. Follow me and I'll make sure everything's taken care of, though he does take care and pay. He doesn't say all that. He just says, hey, you, follow me. Glory to And it's a good thing they recognized who he was because not everyone did and was motivated by that, as we're going to see in a minute. And I want you to remember this. You cannot serve Jesus without following him. Therefore, you can't have any form of real success without following. Wow. John 12, 26 says it like this. Jesus speaking once again. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. Always keep this proper order. He's the leader. You're the follower. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He's the one who reigns eternal, immortal, invisible. The only wise God. He's the one that we follow. He's the only alive king that died for you on a cross. 
He said, and where I am there, my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him, my father, will honor. Wow, wow, wow. If you want the honor of God, you better make sure you follow. I tell you, there's not going to be anything that means more to your life than when you draw your last breath and you meet the King of kings and Lord of lords and you see him. There's nothing that's going to matter as much as you following him. Because on that day, that's where he's going to bestow his honor. Yeah. Yeah. So that makes you really want to evaluate your life. At least it does me. And that's what I looked at several years ago. See, I always refer to 2006, but I realize I'm wasting my life here. Oh, I mean, look, I'm working in radio full-time ministry. I know so many pastors. My dad's a preacher, right? I've been in church. I didn't skip church. I was in church. I mean, I helped start churches, several of them, three at the time. So it's not like I'm, I'm, I'm not... Saying that I, you would have looked at me and been like, what a backslider, what a sinner. You wouldn't have even known. You'd have thought, well, what a guy. And yet I knew I had to fall on my knees and repent and say, I'm going to follow God with everything I have. I'm wasting my life. Wow. Maybe we ought to evaluate. Why? Because I listen to Driven by Eternity. I listen to something called Affabel. We sell it at our little... Uh, bookstore back here. It's an audio drama John Bevere Ministries put out. My friend handed it to me nonchalantly. Didn't realize it was going to wake me up because I related to a guy that served in church his whole life and went to hell. See, I was in church. That's why I related to him. I wasn't no pagan Joe out at the bars every night. No, I never even been to a bar, to be honest with you, other than to pick up my friend's keys to his car one time, but I didn't go in other than that. Never even been in a bar. When they're in their party. And I'm just not that type. You know what I mean? You want to pick up a demon? Go out there. I'm free to do it. You're free to be full of the devil. Yeah. Why would you want that? I want to follow the king. I, I found, if I'm following him, I've never found men of God over there. There are a lot of players out there, but there's no men of God out there. And, uh, you know, who do I want? I want to imitate those that... Through faith and patience inherit the promise, not those that are living in the curse. You just got to make your mind up. Who are you following? Who are you imitating? Well, that does conclude today's television broadcast. But if you would like to hear more from Pastor Jeremy File, we invite you to head over to our website at acceleratechurch.cc and click on the media tab. There you will find every sermon that Pastor Jeremy has preached for your convenience. If you are in the Amarillo area, we would love to meet you in person. We are located at 4400 South Crockett here in Amarillo, and our service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. If you're not from Amarillo, we would still love to hear from you. You can email us at info at acceleratechurch.cc or give us a call. We want to know how can we pray for you? Where are you watching and tuning in from? We are so glad that you tuned in with us today.